Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. I'm here for Peter. That's right, kids. Bill's here for Peter. How's that? Uh-huh, sure. And for uh, the rest of you, I know you are here for Peter. Welcome back to another Ultimate Spider Cast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is. Lil Thorpe and Hellfire, of course. She who even the demon fears. <laughs> Lil Hellfire. As they should, as they should. That's right, kids. And we're back for another, uh, another installment of uh, Pop Gobble Gobble Month. Gobble gobble. This time, yes, back to our favorite punchy bag, Jason McNeil. This time from a uh, not even a baby, Spider Man forty six to forty nine. No superlatives, no adjectives, just Spider Man. You know who he is. Oh. All right, so yes. And again, only two uh, episodes of uh, Hob Gobble Gobble Month here, but you can catch two over on Marvel Tales, so check those out. Some Doctor Strange, some Machine Man, and two issues of Ghost Rider. <laughs> All right, so should we jump into these ones, Lil? Let's do it. All right, so the, like I said, the first one is Spider-Man number 46. Well, um, uh... Spider-Man number 46 from May 1994. Directions. I mean, this is part one of the, the arc is called Beware the Rage of a Desperate Man. Oh, yeah. We're talking about the right guy. <laughs> oh, a few people here are going to be talking about. Uh, writer Howard Mackey. Penciler Tom Lau. Inker Scott Hanna. Colorist Kevin Tinsley. Letterer Richard Starkings. Comic Craft. And editor Danny Fingeroth. Don't get fingered. You knew that was coming, kids. Uh, uh, damn you and your 50 million drops. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, page two. Don't get finger. All right. Uh, page two of four. <laughs> not only two so far. A couple more. And I'll, start with, I'll start our third page. Challenge accepted. Hey, oh. Spider-Man is swinging across Manhattan to try and clear his mind. He is trying to come to terms with the fact that the people who have claimed to be his parents for months have turned out to be imposters, create, imposters created by the chameleon. Yes, yeah. we're here now. Uh, you are here. <laughs> Point to the map. Exactly. I think we're, we're not too far from uh, maximum carnage either. So. Minimum. Minimum carnage. Not yet. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week, kids. Uh, after bringing the chameleon to justice, he discovered that this was all a scheme that was orchestrated by Harry Osborn. Harry got a clue, man. He got a clue. Yeah, from beyond the grave, pretty much. <laughs> he once more thinks about how his enemies always come back, even his late friend, poor Harry. Now he tries the web sling to take his mind off the mess that his life has become. Spider-Man is watching. Thank you, Spike. Sp Spectacular Spider-Man number 200. <laughs> Taking the area out of it. Uh, uh, now he tries it. Yeah, no, no, no. Now he tries the web sling to take his mind off the mess that his life has become. Spider-Man is not the only person being introspective in the city this evening. Elsewhere, Demo Goblin is perched atop a church uh. to see how he has strayed from his original mission. Now that he is free from carnage and his influence, who is this, D.G. Chichester? The demonic <laughs> creature can now return his attentions to tracking down his former host, Jason Mackendale, a.k.a. the Hobgoblin. Oh, God, you know it's terrible. You know it's terrible. <laughs> Even Demo Goblin's like, oh, God, Jason Mackendale. <laughs> uh, as Demo Goblin takes to the air, his presence triggers Spider-Man's spider sense. Oh, it's working this time? Great. 
Oh, yes, I hope a demon from hell would set off your spider sense. It's ting, 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 a ting, ting, ting. You'd be surprised how many men's uh, senses don't go off around demons. <laughs> Speaking from personal experience, Lil? <laughs> I might be. I might be. Well, not the spider sense, but the Peter Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Meanwhile, Jason Mackendale is accompanying a petty thief known as Slug in breaking. Who, in who worse than a Shocker or Scorpion? Slug. Why do they all start with S's? I love, I love Mac Mackendale. He's falling so low. He's falling this guy around breaking into a luxury apartment overlooking Central Park. Slug had broken into it, thinking the place had been abandoned. However, Slug discovered that it was once owned by someone in the big leagues like Mackendale. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Reliable narrator, first of all. What is this? <laughs> or like the the Z the Z leagues. Well, I mean, I guess it, I guess sl the slug. It seems like the big leagues says, "Oh, you wear a mask. <laughs> oh, you got a goblin glider. Oh, you got punched in the face by Spider Man." <laughs> Babes, anybody can catch these hands from Spider Man. It's not. It's not that hard, especially on a bad day where Mary Jane hasn't been cooperative. You in the big leagues, you got your ass beat by Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and Ghost Rider. <laughs> uh, I mean, Doctor Strange is not the big leagues either, but whatever. Oh, my. <laughs> Unless it's Clea, then, then that's the big leagues, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Those are some big leagues. Uh, Jason is surprised to discover that this is a penthouse that was unsewed by Craven the Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> It just keeps getting worse. Oh, yeah. Slug then shows him what he found inside. Craven the Hunter's journal. Unfortunately, the journal was in some kind of code that so that only Craven's son Which can one? Cipher. Oh, this is when we first discover, yes, he has a bunch of bastard sons out there. But yes, this, I think this is the first one. Uh, Slug explains that Craven's son was sent back to Russia in, some time ago to reclaim some family estate. Slug figures they could sell the journal for a large sum of money. Uh, however, Mackendale has other ideas. He has more than one. Uh, shocking. That's the most shocking thing in this whole issue, honestly. We need the money. Gimme, gimme. Uh, Poor Slug. He kills Slug with one of his razor bats. With the journal in his hands, Mackendale figures he has the key to gaining the power he needs to finally defeat Spider-Man. That's when Demo Goblin comes crashing through the window to confront Mackendale once and for all. The battle was interrupted by Spider-Man, who has come to bring both, both men to justice. However, when he notices that they are in one of Craven's properties, it causes Spider-Man to remember his final... Oh, there's that good old PTSD. I mm -hmm. thought you were gone for a while there, bud. A battle that found him buried alive for a whole week. Spider-Man is briefly disoriented until Mackendale and Demo Goblin begin fighting each other. Snapped out of his tra traumatized state, Spider-Man first takes down Demo Goblin and webs him up. However, when he goes whip, back... Whip. Oh my! <laughs> uh... However, when he goes back inside for Jason, he tries to flee. As the wall crawler tries to capture him, Demo Goblin breaks free and renews his attack. At first, Spider-Man decides to let the two kill each other, but he decides against it. Reaching his wit's end, the web slinger subdues Demo Goblin once more. However, Mackendale manages to escape when he uses a number of pumpkin bombs to compromise the structure of the building. <laughs> yes, we call that uh, yes, Maneuver 47, a.k.a. A couple of bulls down the gold. <laughs> Just another day. Just another day. Oh, no, 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 Marvel's New York. That's Maneuver 69. <laughs> a couple of bulls down the gold. Uh... As Spider-Man gets Demo Goblin to safety, Mackendale escapes atop his Goblin Glider. In the aftermath of the battle, Spider-Man is unimpressed that two more of his enemies are back and is grateful that at least Craven is a foe that will stay dead. <coughs> yeah, uh, sure. I mean, it's like at least they poke him to like, what, 2010 or something? But yeah. When Demo Goblin comes around, he is surprised that... What, uh... Uh, Spider-Man is surprised to learn that Demo Goblin wasn't hunting down Mackendale to kill him, but to offer him forgiveness. You don't forgive Mackendale. You don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't forgive him for nothing. Call me a symbiote, because I just want to scream. Oh! 
<laughs> Jason Mackendale arrives in Russia under an assumed name. As he passes through customs, he tells the guard that he has come for a little bit of business and pleasure. After <laughs> <laughs> the old little tall fire method of travel. <laughs> Okay, kids. Hey, kids. If you kids in the beginning of December this year, if you see Loth on the streets of Vegas, if you know where no, you, you did. Because uh, <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. After clearing customs, Jason intends on hunting down and finding Craven's son and forcing him to translate the secrets in his father's journal. Or you could just get your little demon head chopped off. How about that? Oh, that would be nice. But now, you know. <sighs> like of all the of all the goblins. Why did it have to be Mackendale? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, all these notes. Yeah, we've already gone over all this. Uh, and covered most of it, too. <laughs> yes. And yes, kids. Yes, they will bring Carrie Aver and the Hunter back in Amazing Spider-Man 635, uh, August 2010. So. Yeesh. Mm-hmm. Couldn't let him... Well, it's like you can't wipe out the whole Osborne line, yeah? I know, but it's like he had 20 sons. It's like, what the only Just use his freaking son. Yeah, the two... What's the fun in that? As we know, most legacy characters don't last. <laughs> I know. But then you poo-poo all over J.M. Dimitrius' story. They can't help themselves, bro. I know. It, it, listen, one thing about a suit, especially in the marketing department and sales... Oh, they'll do anything for a buck. Yeah, but how many people were clamoring for Craven the Hunter's return? Apparently, so they did some some kind of uh, magic research. I don't know. I mean, Craven the Hunter, who died in like 1987 or 88, then like, was anyone clamoring for his return in 2010? <laughs> I guess. Craven. Uh, I mean, maybe because of the Spider-Man animated show mm. that those episodes did pretty good, and it took uh, them a while. I don't know. The toys. Just think of the toys. Hey kids, do you want to hey, use he molds? Hey kids, you want to hey kids, you want a hairy man in a uh, lion toga? Here you go. It's kind of like, oh, I don't want my son to play with Barbies. It'll make him gay. Um, babes, have you seen the GI Joes? It's got kung fu grip. That's all I'm saying. Hey, you want oh. boobs or muscled up men? What I mean, which one? Really, honestly, think about it. <laughs> oh, Rob not that either one will make your children gay, but I'm just saying the logic there just. Well, I was going to say, if, if Rob Liefeld designs them, they'll have both. <laughs> or Kingpin. That was, that was for Russell. I was going to say, well, who's, who's that? Who's that? Is that Gamma Charge? Come on. <laughs> rub that one in. Gotta rub that one in. The strongest Marvel podcast. King, King, Kingpin. Oh, Jokes about Kingpin's boobs. No, I invented that, you dick. Yeah, nobody's trying to take that away from you, Russell. Nobody. That's all. That's your lane. You can stay in it. <laughs> Wild like an animal. All right. Uh, thoughts on this issue, though? No thoughts, just prayers. Moving on. <laughs> oh, thoughts and prayers? That's all you can give me to? No thoughts, just prayers, because, God, that was a dry-ass story. <laughs> It gets better, but this is not like a good jumping on point at all. And again, I mean, we're in the whole point where Peter's having his little trauma after the whole parents thing. So, like, we don't even see him outside of that mask in these issues. Just the way Felicia likes it. Hey, oh. <laughs> all right. So, the next part is Spider Man number 47. Uh, this one, June 1994, Old Habits by the same team. Old habits die hard. <laughs> no. Jason Mackendale has traveled to Russia in order to translate the secrets of Craven the Hunter's journal. His travels have brought him to the Ural Mountains in the search in, in search of Craven's son, who has returned to their family uh, country to reclaim some family property. After weeks of searching the mountains, Jason finds himself surrounded by a pack of hungry wolves. Which works out for him as he has been without food himself for a number wait, of Wait, 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 wait. Because he's hungry. Because they're hungry like the wolf. Uh, <laughs> back, in the, back in the United States, Demo Goblin has been incarcerated at Rikers Island following his recent battle with Spider-Man. Although the guards are uneasy with his presence, the demon sits reflectively in his cell. He begins to think about where he strayed off his righteous path after he is bonded to and separated from the Hobgoblin. 
you know, you know, you're pretty, you know, you have issues of a demon's rethinking his life after being bonded to you. Yeah, it's, 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 it's Mackendale. I totally like, listen, I I, I'm never on Mackendale's side, okay? <laughs> Who is? <laughs> I'm in the side of him getting punched in the face. Exactly. He thinks he went wrong when he agreed to join Carnage during his rampage through New well, York. That, yeah, that's where everybody think? goes wrong. You think? <laughs> I mean, that's DG Chichester. However, he looks at his incarceration as a blessing, as now he can eliminate all the criminals that are locked up with him. Two hours later, Demon Goblin's rampage through Rikers has drawn the attention of Spider-Man. While the authorities are happy to let the wall crawler in to deal with his, this threat, Spider-Man is unhappy that his rival, Lance Bannon, is getting photos of the story for the Daily Bugle. Ah, don't worry, kid. Lance Bannon! You're not going to have to worry about Lance in a few months here, kid. I, I always oh. think of Seinfeld when Lance Bannon comes up. Uh, Banya. <laughs> exactly. Kenny Banya. Just as bad. Just as bad. That's cool, Jerry. Cool. <laughs> Back in Russia, Mackendale finds the old Kravenoff estate, but before heading inside, he buries his gear in the snow outside. Oh my, he actually has a decent thought. There he finds someone waiting for him. <laughs> that's the, sho that's the shopping, shocking moment for this issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, kids, and at this point, it's when Jason Mackendale had a thought. Hill oh. has officially frozen over. Uh, there he finds someone waiting for him a man's servant named Greg Gregory when Jason explains that he has something that Vladimir Kravenov would be interested in Gregory correctly deduces that Jason has Ser Sergei Kravenov's journal however Mackendale refuses to discover that to discuss his discovery with anyone but, but Vladimir inside Jason is ambushed by Vladimir who demands that the mercenary hand over his father's journal However, Jason was smart enough to anticipate a move like this. Unreliable narrator! <laughs> As such, he has only brought half the journal and only agrees to give Vladimir the other half after he helps him get what he wants. Vladimir agrees to have a talk and orders Gregory to prepare a room for their guests. While at Rikers Island, Spider-Man sneaks into the facility to search for Demo Goblin, even though he doesn't feel any sympathy for the criminals inside. Spider-Man finds his bow in the central cell block where the demon is offering the criminals locked up uh, to willingly sacrifice themselves. When Spider-Man is about to stop him, all right, ready for the eye roll, kids, the wall crawler is ambushed by the criminal known as Gauntlet. Ugh. Remember that, kids? Web around Web 100, remember that? Or Unfortunately, I do. Name of the Rose, remember that? Uh -huh. When Spider-Man is about to stop him, uh, yeah, at first the wall crawler doesn't recognize him, but then he remembers that Gauntlet, a.k.a. Alfredo Morelli, was the man who briefly posed as Richard Fisk. Scroll down, kids. It's too much to explain here. <laughs> There's not enough editor's notes in the world for that. I know. <laughs> it's on the playlist, kids. That's all I'll say. Although the two fight it out momentarily until they are ambushed by one of Demo Goblin's pumpkin bombs. Meanwhile, in Russia, Vladimir and Jason talk about exchanging Craven's journal. Vladimir offers Mackendale as much money as he wants in exchange for the journal. However, Jason explains that he doesn't want money. He wants the power that Vladimir's father had. Vladimir is angered by this as he believes that he's the only one who should receive his father's legacy. He tries to throw a spear at Mackendale but misses. The two find themselves at an impasse until Gregory talks to his master. Hearing what his servant has to say, Vladimir changes his mind and agrees that they should make an arrangement after all. The smart play, Mackendale, would be, uh, yeah, get paid and retire. Babes, he'll never have that idea. I know. Back at Rikers, Demo Goblin has gauntlet by the throat and offers Spider-Man the chance to kill his foe. However, Spider-Man insists that nobody needs to die, saying that they are not in a position to judge who lives or dies. While in Russia, Vladimir has used the information from the journal to... Uh, to set up means of creating a process that hardwires his father's formula into one's DNA, making it a permanent change. Although he speaks from a position of authority, in reality, neither he nor Gregory knows that the process will prove to be fatal and are using Mackendale as a test subject. Now, that's a smart move. Jason Somebody here... could just finally get rid of Mackendale. 
Well, well, he'll get his eventually, no? Uh, it, it was way too long. That's all I'm saying. If I could go back and if I could turn back time, I'd I'd make sure that Macandale went away <laughs> sooner. Thank you. Thank you, Cher. Um, Jason hears them whispering, suspects a double cross, and gloats to himself that he had just prepared for such a contingency. At Rikers, Demo Goblin continues to tempt Spider-Man into taking the life of Gauntlet, saying that his death will stop the villain from coming back to harm his friends and family. Although Spider-Man finds this tempting, he refuses to stoop to Demo Goblin's level and assaults his foe. Overpowered, Demo Goblin decides to flee the scene and smashes through the roof. With the debris threatening to crush everyone in the cell block, Spider-Man braces it with his webbing. With the authorities taking control of the facility, Spider-Man warns Gauntlet to stay out of his face in the future. While back in Russia, the experiment on Jason Mackendale begins. As nodules begin to painfully grow out of his skin, Mackendale figures he is going to die here, but he knows that he will not die alone. Outside, his goblin glider slowly rises out of the snow. Thoughts, Lou? Meh. <laughs> Meh for Mackendale. Uh, so either the experiment or uh, some of the shady things he's done in the past. Yes, he has his growths all over his body. <laughs> That's just uh, plaque psoriasis. He'll be all right. He'll just, he just needs some lotion and some oatmeal. Oh my! I was gonna say, Lord knows where he's been sticking those pumpkin bombs. A <laughs> uh, uh, couple of bowls down the gulf. <laughs> Uh, this next title just made me think of these are the demons of our past as the hours as the sand in an hourglass. <laughs> these are the demon days of our lives. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, Spider Man number forty eight uh, for um, July nineteen ninety four. Yes, demons of our past. Wait, um, wait, wait! Part of the beware the rage of a desperate man arc. <laughs> beware the rage of a desperate man. I just remember that. I'm like, oh my god. I mean, he's always been desperate. What's your point? <laughs> Don't need to put such a fine point on it now. <laughs> Are we talking about Mackendale? Shouldn't it be like, beware the stupidity of a... Or... Yeah, but beware the idiot? Like, <laughs> be, Beware the rage of a stupid man? Something, you know. <laughs> He's trying to be fancy with it. You, you can't blame him. Yeah. Howard's trying to class up the joint, you know? Or is Peter the desperate man? Ooh, desperately angry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> desperately seeking vengeance? <laughs> I mean, is that that's a fancier t title than, a, uh, you know, he he's had <laughs> enough. <laughs> <sighs> Mother loving. <laughs> uh, having traveled to Russia in order to get the powers detailed in the journal of Craven the Hunter, Jason McIndale agreed to undergo a new process created by Craven the Hunter's son, Vladimir. We know this. The process is incredibly painful and causes him to have hallucinations of his foes, Spider-Man and the Demo Goblin. Believing that he is being double-crossed, McIndale summons his goblin glider and equipment, which he buried in the snow outside the Craven off the state. Growing tired of Jason's raving, Vladimir orders his assistant Greg or is it Greg or Gregory to have someone put Mackendale out of his misery. And, and again, it's a Mackendale story. Who really cares about continuity? That's true. As the glider comes crashing through the window, Jason breaks free from the operating table. To his surprise, Jason discovers that he is more durable and stronger than ever as a bullet bounces off his skin and he is able to take Kravenoff's guards on his own. Oh, God. Look what you did, bro. Look what you did! Oh Lord, Mackendale in a roid rage. I know. Uh, since the process was a success, Jason Mackendale merely puts on his hobgoblin costume and decides to leave without further incident, as he is looking forward to getting back to the United States. As he goes, he tosses the other half of Craven's journal as per his original agreement with Vladimir. In the aftermath of the Hobgoblin's escape, Gregor demands that he uh, explains that he survived the process due to a genetic anomaly in Mackendale's body that allowed him to survive. It's that damn serum. <laughs> genetic anomaly. Yes, it, yes, it works exceptionally well on a-holes. Stupid a-holes. <laughs> exactly. Three days later, Spider-Man is still hunting for Demo Goblin in New York City. The demon has been killing criminals since he broke out of Rikers Island days earlier. Spider-Man is tired of all the senseless death and vows to get Demo Goblin and to put him away for good. Meanwhile, the leader of the Garrison crime family is gathered uh, for a business meeting. 
They are approached by Hobgoblin, who offers to deal with the Demon Goblin. Garrison thinks this is a joke and is about to walk out when Hobgoblin flies up next to him and snaps his neck. When his loyal bodyguards try to kill the Hobgoblin, they are tossed out of a window for their troubles. The new leader of the gang agrees to take the Hobgoblin's offer. The villain then warns them to get out of here as he knows that Demon Goblin will track him here and he will collect his price once he is finished. Uh, oh, yeah, because they have some kind of link. Uh, God, poor Demon Goblin. Can you imagine you have some kind of Being link? Being in the mind of Mackendale? Oh, my God, that's a fate worse than death. I'm sorry. You have all that crap from his head floating at you? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Not far away, Spider-Man is trying to talk his sense into two crooks, warning them that being out on the streets makes them perfect targets for Demon Goblin. Satisfied that he got the message across, the web slinger leaves. When the two crooks are about to come to blows again, they are interrupted yet again. This time it is Demon Goblin, and he is prepared to kill them. Not long after, Demon Goblin's mental link with Hobgoblin draws him to his former host body. He finds Hobgoblin on the roof of a church. The Hobgoblin is determined to end their rivalry once and for all. There we go. Here's a, here, It's been a while, kids. At the home of May Parker, Mary Jane is just on her way out of the house when the phone suddenly rings. Mary Jane's hopes that it is her husband, Peter. When she answers the phone, the person on the other end of the line doesn't say anything. Mary Jane hangs up, not wanting to deal with any, any more weirdness after Aunt May suffered a stroke to deal with any more weirdness. Should have been gone forever! Exactly. At a payphone miles away, the mystery caller, who bears a striking resemblance to Peter Parker, is surprised that it was Mary Jane who answered the phone. Ugh. Not another clone. It's Ben. It's Ben Rowley. I know. I said not another clone. <laughs> oh, Osborne Journal number one. Oh, man. So much cash grabbiness in the night. Oh, oh, my. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Spider-Man is learning the battle between the Hobgoblin and Demon Goblin at a nearby church. Inside, he finds the two goblins fighting each other. Also present are an injured woman and her daughter. Spider-Man is furious that the two combatants would put these innocent people at risk. Getting between the two, Spider-Man is ill-prepared for the Hobgoblin's enhanced strength and is easily subdued. That's the lowest point of your life, getting knocked down by Mackendale. The Hobgoblin then... Even on a roid rage. Like, mm -hmm. ugh. Like, he, you have to go do some soul-searching at that point. <laughs> uh, the Hobgoblin then resumes his battle with Demon Goblin. While in Russia, Vladimir Kravenov is determined to undergo the same process so he can finally become a worthy successor to his father. Babe, okay. your dad was craving the hunter. Be so serious. Like, what are you... Ugh. Anyway. This this kid need, needs therapy, not not drugs. So you need a, a scientific process to get you up the D-list? Really? How how weak are you, kiddo? Are we talking uh, Captain America pre-serum in, in the MCU? Like... <sighs> Something. Although Gregor insists that Vladimir is not ready, he is determined to claim his title as the son of the hunter. More like son of a... Never mind. I knew you were going there. <laughs> Back in New York, Spider-Man has re recovered from Hobgoblin's attack. He figures that the Hobgoblin is now as strong as Norman Osborn, the original Green Goblin. Oh, babes. No. <laughs> Please. He, his hair game ain't that strong. <laughs> Demon Goblin notices that one of the pillars in the church is about to collapse on the mother and her child. Seeing the child as an innocent, Dima Goblin breaks free to brace the support beam. However, the Hobgoblin is uninterested in saving an innocent life and resumes his attack on Dima Goblin. When Spider-Man tries to get involved, Dima Goblin tells the wall crawler to save the girl and her mother. The wall cr crawler complies and carries them out. With the innocent people safely away, Dima Goblin cannot hold the pillar any longer anymore and lets go, getting buried into the debris in the process. When Spider-Man returns for Demon Goblin, he finds no trace of the Hobgoblin. Discovering that Demon Goblin is dead, Spider-Man becomes enraged. When the church's priest tries to calm him, Spider-Man swings off, intending to take the anger out on the Hobgoblin instead. Ooh, Macadil for the catch these spider hands! Exactly. Finally, we've been building up to this for freaking too many issues. <laughs> I know. All this to get to that, man. Come on. Shout out to the cover by Tom Lyle, by the way. I like this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's some decent covers on these, yeah. It's too bad it's covered oh. up with uh, Beware the Rage of a Desperate Man arc <laughs> all over it. Exactly. Oh, 
don't forget to share what you uh what you got recently at the end of the Oh episode. yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, kids. I ran and rave about it all the time, but yes, it's gonna I'm gonna have to find a place on the wall for it because display my beliefs. <laughs> Phil puts his money where his mouth is. No. Hey oh. <laughs> All right. Should we get to the last one, Lil? Yeah, let's do it. Where we just introduce randomly. Because this is this is this is this is a relatable content for me. Shout out to Cold Heart. Where we just randomly introduce a new character. In get your last- shackles, Howard Mackey. Get your shackles. In the last part of the niche, uh, last part of this story, and it's like I don't know if we ever see the character again. I'm like, wow, that's random. So random. Although maybe it's ninety four, maybe Mac he's like, oh, maybe get a mini series with her or something. Nah, he's just trying to get shekels. Don't even worry about it. Well, yeah, shekels from a mini series. <laughs> Spider Man number ninety four or forty nine from August nineteen ninety four. Cold Hearts. Same team. Having completely abandoned his identity of Peter Parker, Spider Man. Oh, we should have saved this for Christmas, doesn't? It? Isn't it like um? Cold Heart does like this. Like he runs into her during Christmas or something like that. What, in this one? Right? I remember something about Cold Heart and Christmas. I can't remember what it is now. I don't... uh, I don't... Hold on. There's this character. Maybe it was with the New Warriors. Or the Marvel Holiday Special. Something like that, maybe? It could be, yeah. Yeah, I think it was the Marvel Holiday Special from like 2011. Oh, okay. Anyway, sorry. We can go. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, this oh, no, this character comes back. Okay. All right, kids. All right, uh, yeah, Peter uh, Spider Man is a bad his Peter Parker identity stalks the city looking for criminals to punish. Uh, Frank Castle says, "I have a copyright." Spider- <laughs> if, yeah, Frank Castle. I'm like, didn't you once tell me that that's not the way to be? <laughs> Hypocrite! You're a phony. Did you did you chide me for uh, not even real bullets, mercy bullets? Come on! Oh, don't even let me start. Oh my god! Since you got Netflix back, the original Punisher with John Travolta is on Netflix right now. So. That's not the original Punisher. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know the, the one that we can really make fun of. <laughs> oh, nice. Spotting a man attempting to mug a woman in an alley, Spider-Man quickly stops him and leaves the thug webbed onto the sidewalk. Flip, flip. <laughs> exactly. Not in the face. <laughs> right in the face with that sack. Not in the face. Uh, Let's stick it on the floor. I cannot relate. <laughs> you get him right in the face with that sack. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know, Lilith. Uh, I don't do Twinkies or toaster strudels, so... Uh, meanwhile, well, some random character. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, a woman breaks into a classified government facility, trying to keep her haunting memories at bay and desiring revenge. She begins putting on a suit of armor that is being kept at the facility. Is, is this her first appearance or no? Because like I know that I have this issue, but it was not in key. It, I did not get this from a key issue section. It was just in a random fifty cent bin. Mm-hmm. I no tea, no shade. <laughs> Yes, this is her first appearance. Interesting. <laughs> I guess they didn't think it was that key. <laughs> no, this is like really recent too that I got this issue. Like Ooh. probably like within the last six months. So that's interesting. Because oh. you know comic book people, they're like anything, anything they'll they'll, they'll put into a key issue <laughs> bin Ooh. to charge more money. But this isn't a 50 cent bin. So take that, make that, a, make of what, what you will with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, the woman calling herself Cold Heart is interrupted by guards just as she finishes putting on the armor. She quickly incapacitates them with her energy charged swords. She is furious that she has she was retired and her clearance revoked. However, she refuses to stay in retirement until she has eliminated a pair of super powered individuals. Hmm, how could that be? She's a man eater. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That costume is not the best, by the way. No. I mean, but at least her butt cheeks aren't hanging out, so there's that. <clears throat> Sorry, Silk. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> hey, don't they don't they, don't rip on Ray's favorite. Come on. <laughs> I mean, Silk, not butt cheeks. Well, well. <laughs> well, either way. Potato, potato. What the f? I'm like, uh, doesn't he also like another woman who has her butt cheeks hanging out?
Oh yeah, t- I mean Tiger w- w- wears a bikini for yeah. And what's the other one? Um, Psylocke. Ah. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme. That's all. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that theme. Just saying. I'm sensing a theme with Ray. Sex on the mind. Uh, mean, uh, meanwhile, the Hobgoblin has decided to wrap up some unfinished business now that he has gained enhanced powers. He pays a visit to his home of his ex-wife. Of course, Jason McIndale will be married to Karen in order to reclaim his son, Jay. First, real first name, Kevin confirmed. Because <laughs> that's a male Karen is a Kevin. He was married to a Karen. <laughs> After knocking out Karen's new boyfriend, the Hobgoblin then takes his son away. It's not long before the authorities arrive on the scene to try and stop the Hobgoblin from kidnapping the boy. Spider-Man also learns about the attempted kidnapping and storms into the building, intending to take in Hobgoblin for murdering Demo Goblin. When reports of Spider-Man come in, Coldheart is satisfied that two of her targets are in are in one place. At that moment in Russia, Vladimir Kravinov is uh, undergoing the process to gain powers of his late father. Vladimir ignores Gregor's concerns intent on getting these powers so he can make his father proud. Back in the United States, Spider-Man confronts the Hobgoblin in his ex-wife's home. The villain tells the wall crawler to get lost as this doesn't concern him. Uh, The Hobgoblin then begins to gloat how things are finally coming together for him. This causes Spider-Man to think about all of his recent problems. Aunt May being in the hospital after suffering a stroke. uh, The fact that he is having troubles talking with his wife, Mary Jane. And lastly, the imposters who were posing as his parents. Yeah, robots, kids. Spider-Man is made furious by all this and is about to attack the Hobgoblin when his webbing is frozen solid by Coldheart. This interruption allows Hobgoblin to escape with his son. Coldheart blames both Spider-Man and Hobgoblin for what happened to her family and intends to eliminate the wall crawler, then go after the Hobgoblin herself. Spider-Man refuses to let her stop him from doing his job, but she stuns him with the cold energy from her swords. She blames Spider-Man for what happened to her son, but Spider-Man is more concerned about the safety of Hobgoblin's son. After knocking her aside, he swings away. Spider-Man catches up to Hobgoblin and his son on a nearby rooftop. He interrupts the tense situation. The wall crawler uh, uh, lets his rage get the better of him, wanting to put the Hobgoblin away for good. He warns the villain that he is coming after all his foes. Realizing that he is losing the battle, Hobgoblin gets some distance from Spider-Man by tossing a pumpkin bomb and flies away. As the wall crawler recovers from the blast, Coldheart arrives and attempts to eliminate him. However, Jay Mackendale stops her, saying that the hero saved his life. Thinking this over for a moment, Coldheart spares the wall crawler and leaves. When Spider-Man recovers from the blast, he quickly gets over the fact that both his attackers are gone because he rescued the young boy, and that is more important. At that moment, out west, a strange man has collected his last paycheck from the diner he was working at so he could head east. His former co-workers are concerned because he was so troubled, and they hope everything turns out all right. (laughs) Damn Osborne journals. While back in Russia, the process to give Vladimir Kravinov his father's powers with the the operation was uh, was a success. He decides that his next move is to go to the United States and destroy Spider-Man. Watch your back, Spidey! (laughs) Uh, uh, But yes, kids, that mysterious man was Ben Riley. He's coming for you, Peter! (laughs) It's coming. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, I just, like, I just reread Ultimate Universe number one of I'm like, why do they always give this job to Jonathan Hickman? No T, no Shay. Like, after X-Men, I'm just so sick of seeing his name. I'm just being real. Yeah. So, did you see in that uh, new Ultimate Spider-Man, you know, of course, yes, yeah, good news is that uh, him and Mary Jane are going to be married, have to get, you see, I guess it says they're going to change it up. He's not going to become Spider-Man until he become he's an adult. He's not going to be a teenager when he gets his powers, I guess. That's crazy, but I like to see the intent and purpose for it behind it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, at least it's something different. Yeah, so what's going to, I mean, does that mean that Ant-Man and Uncle Ben are still alive? Like, what's going to be his floating heads of guilt? Don't tell me they killed the kids. Here, here's the, here's Don't give me a Punisher origin story, please. Or does he need a floating head of guilt? That's another different direction to go with Spider-Man, is that he doesn't have a floating head of guilt. Do they have the balls to not give him floating heads of guilt? I don't know. 
I don't know. Unless like, unless there's whatever the, the accident that gives them is someone dies in the accident that gives them his powers. Maybe. I don't know. Like, this is gonna be interesting. Like, does he have a lab partner or something who's gonna get killed when he gets the spider powers? Maybe that lab partner's Gwen. Who knows? So if he's already an adult, what if they're married before he gets the powers? That definitely changes the dynamic. Mm-hmm. Now, is this gonna? I, I, who's writing that one? By the way. Um. Oh, I forget. Uh. Because that's going to make all the world a difference to me. What, the writer? Yeah. And the motivations, what the possible motivations for this specific change could be. Because that's a cool what if, but is that enough to sustain a maxi series for an Ultimates title? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's being written by Hickman. Oh, God. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's just trying to be a different special snowflake. That's all. Penciler Marco Cicchetto. Oh, okay. Marco Cicchetto on art. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like January 10th, so. All right. I mean, like I said, Hickman has ruined X-Men, so just hopefully he doesn't ruin Spider-Man being married with kids, the thing that I've been wanting for, like, literally, like, 15 years at this point. Amen, sister. I hear it. <laughs> so I'm going to support it, but, you know, I'm going to buy it. But if I if I vetch about it, I vetch about it. I just don't yeah. trust Hickman anymore. He's just oh, kind of no. lost a lot of cre- credibility with me. Yeah, I mean, I want the marriage back in the worst way, but if I don't like it... I want it in the mainstream. I don't want it in the Ultimate Universe. But, you know, baby steps. Baby steps. But, like, I'm not afraid that they'll turn that... Like, they'll they'll destroy the rest of the Ultimate Universe. That'll be the pocket universe. And they're like, well, he's never going to be married with kids in the 616. But you have the Ultimate Universe. That's my biggest fear. And I'm like, well, guess what? I'm not not, going to read Amazing anymore. I'll read the Ultimate book. Well, I mean, remember, I mean, the ultimate, the original Ultimate Universe that they originally brought over, whatever, you know, what the, the most the, the one thing that worked, which was Miles. Miles. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because they needed a black character. Don't at me. It is what it is. It is what it is. Do not at me. It's the truth. Like, it's clearly the truth. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I, I think their whole rap on Miles was like, oh, yeah, black Spider-Man. So what? He's in an alternate universe. <laughs> it, exactly. That's yeah. it. Exactly my point. But now, I mean, I love Miles, but what are they doing with him? Well, Sony did something great, and they were like, well, fuck you. We're not going to support that. Whoa, 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 a slot create a spy- white spider boy. <laughs> no, for real. That is what it's smacking of. Like, I didn't want to say The kid wears reveal. tennis shoes. The kid wears tennis shoes. What are you talking Tell me he's not a white Miles Morales. Come on. Yeah. It's like, babes, you guys are, like, like, if anything, you guys got two white, at least two white Spider-Men. Come on, you got Betty and you got Pete. Come on, what are you doing? You're killing us. You're, you're going to give you a young white ginger spider, spider boy. <laughs> you, you know it's bad when a character's ginger and I'm not. I'm like, eh. You know it's bad. I'm, like, I'm interested, but it's like, what are you, how are you going to differentiate Spider-Boy? Oh, like, oh, you actually made him his sidekick? Like, Spider-Man doesn't need a sidekick, babes. That's the whole point of Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Do you not know your history? I know. Sly. Unless Spider-Boy is his son, I don't give two flying figs. There, I said it. So, Sly, Sly uh, and loves the tout that he knows all this his Spider-Man history. I mean, did you not get the point? Oh, or is God. it? Don't, t- don't tell me he secretly turned it into... No, nobody tell Dave. Uh, Chuck Dixon. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> The first smack of Q and Spider Boy. I'm writing a letter. <laughs> I'm writing it. <laughs> Just letting y'all know. Oh. I've got my eye on you, Spider Boy. <laughs> but speak- my tight leash. <laughs> oh my. But speaking of that marriage, kids, look what I picked up that day a story yesterday. <laughs> Ooh, so pretty. Yeah. I showed Justin out last night. He's like, "Oh, that's great." And I'm like, "Yeah, man." That's it was good. just in the. It was just in your local comic book shop, like that. It's it, it's it's like a um. It's not just just a comic book store. There's a it's a. It's oh, it's like, like memorabilia thing. Yeah, it's like a collectible store. Yeah, they all okay. have kinds of stuff. Yeah, because they all have like sports stuff and music stuff. Yeah, it's all kinds of. It, but they do have comics and Funkos and stuff too, and toys. And, oh, that's super cool. Yeah, I like yeah, it. I, that I love that for you, Phil. I now, you just gotta put it next to your pi- the picture of Dan- you and Danielle's wedding picture, just like right behind it. <laughs> you tell her. Yeah, she'll be nice that. She'll like, yeah, she'll get mad. She'll get mad at me, but like Lil suggested it. No, no, she'll get mad at me. Not you. She'll be like, why'd you put that out there? I'll be like, Lil suggested it. It's too low. 
gloves. It's cute. <laughs> I could do that, but I kind of want. I just. I kind of want it back here so Marvel can see. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Remember this, kid. CG Sylvester, we got our eye on you, sir. <laughs> Well, like I said, I, like they kind of tied my hands to have to force to to support that. So even if it's a terrible story, I have to buy it just for the fact that they're married. I mean, at least have to, I, I yeah. hope that it's good. You but Hickman's track record is getting pretty bad with me. I mean, you at least have to try the first issue. Oh, I'm gonna try the first issue and the second issue and the third. I'm gonna buy them all. Mm. But like I said, I'm I, it's Hickman, so I just know. I just know in my heart of hearts. I just hope it's good because yeah, I want. I really, want it to be good so bad. Don't I really want to support this, and all you fa marriage fans, go out and buy this. Go buy copies for your friends. I mean, come on, let's show them. Oh my God! Somebody said that liking Spider-Man is old-fashioned. It's something that somebody that was born in the 1900s would do, and I'm just like, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> really? I mean, I know, I know, it was early on, but I mean, those all those movies were from the 2000s. Oh, the best Spider-Man movie, yeah. And I again, said it. Sorry, Tom. And again, there, and again, there's still movies in the MCU and the Spider Verse stuff. I, so I, I don't get that. I mean, you would think the kids have nothing else to be like, oh, yeah, Miles. Well, Miles is one thing. He's a relatively recent development. They're like, yeah, it's kind of played out. I'm like, well, good. It's not for you then. Maybe they'll finally listen to us and give, them, give us our fucking marriage back. <laughs> in the 616. I need it in the 616. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, again, we always talk about this, but it's like they dumb him down because it's just like, oh. They've just... been so lost with the the character of Peter Parker. Like, it's just like make him a Spider Man 24 7. Matter of fact, break him up with Mary Jane, get him back with Felicia, and he could be Spider Man 24 7 if that's what you want to do. But he ain't going to be Spider Man 24 7 with Mary Jane. It no. just ain't going to happen. That's not the dynamic we want. Uh, no, they, you can't have him Spider Man 2040. Look at, look at this, what we just got done talking about. He can't be. No, we need Peter Parker. Parker, and again, it's like we either you either need to give him a job where he's not working for Norman Osborn, or he needs to get back to school, or both. You know, yeah, but make him a professor again, or 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 a high school science teacher for all I care. And it, yes, yeah, something. Yeah. Spe oh my God, if he gets married and has kids, he has to almost be a science teacher, right? Like that's yeah. that's so perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And again, you need supporting cast. I mean, I'm talking about the main book. You need supporting cast. Listen, if he gets married, I think they feel like if he gets married, they're definitely going to have to kill Aunt May. Nobody's clamor for Aunt May to stay alive anymore, babes. It's it's the year of our Lord, 2023. Aunt May can go. Marissa Tomei is not playing Aunt May for too much longer. Aunt May can go. She's got about one more movie in her. She's <laughs> done, isn't she? She's dead, isn't she? <laughs> you never know. They'll probably bring her back. Mm. I just don't, They're trying to bring Tony Stark back. They're <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, they're trying to bring RDJ back. They'll try to bring back Marissa Tomei. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, again, uh, who's clamoring for Aunt May? I don't know. I mean, I know it's like a tradition. It's like you, you got to keep Aunt May alive and, and Uncle Ben has to stay dead. Like, I get it. I yeah, get but it. She, was on de she was on death's door. She's been on death's door for decades. Yes. Like, yes, for 60 years. Come well, on. As long as I've been alive, basically. Before we were alive in the <laughs> 60s. It's like that weak heart needs to go. I know we've had advances in medicine, but like not that great. And once again, I mean, Marvel, you have our permission. We've given you permission. The mayor, bring back the marriage and kill off Aunt May. And you can milk it, milk us for a month or two with all that. It, it'll be a year, but it's fine. I'll buy it. I'll be a sucker. I'll be a sap. I'll buy it. Oh, you can yeah. even have a funeral, a, 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 a one shot funeral for, for Aunt May for all I care. I'll buy it. Just do it. Just do it. Oh, you really want to pull, tug on the heartstrings? She dies like the day of the wedding or something. <gasps> How dare you, Philip? I love it. That's his deal with his new deal with Mephisto. You can have your marriage back. Hmm. But your Aunt May has to die. <laughs> hmm, the old lady or the superior puss? What's it going to be? Superior Make the right choice this time, Pete. <laughs> superior puss. Uh just saying, dear dear Marvel, we're, we're telling you what most of your fans actually want. Come on, Spidey, it's either Superior Puss. Or if that Aunt May's alive, it's I wonder if my wrist is ready for that. <laughs> blip, blip. <laughs> no, like somebody attacks oh, oh I mean Norman's got enough uh dead bodies on his tab on Peter's behalf. I mean, can you imagine if he like kills Aunt May the day of the wedding or something? With a good old pumpkin bomb. Hey, or oh. even worse, a glider through the chest. <gasps> oh, she jumps in front of Mary. She says, Mary Jane, glider to the chest. Or he just sends in a random thug to shoot her. The, <gasps> the Uncle Ben. No, not a random thug. No. 
no or more Nor- random thugs. Or Norman just hires a random thug to go shoot her. So that would be hilarious, actually. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Circle. Okay, Norman as the Ant Man killed day of the wedding. Peter's about to go Avenger. Otto steps up like, no, go get Mary. I got him. (laughs) (laughs) Two birds, one stone. Norman can die again for good this time. (laughs) He he took my superior puss. No, I got him. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But no, I'm excited. I'm not going to act like I'm not excited for the Ultimate Universe. But that Ultimate Universe number one was $7. Like, it's, it's getting outrageous out here, bro. I know. I know. And, like, it's the foundational issue, but, like, I actually, I don't think Spider-Man fans needed to read it personally. No, I mean, there wasn't any Why issue. is there always a threat to the future? Like, what? That's modern comics. They always feel like you have to threaten the future of the multiverse. Ugh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I I, th- I did see people were responding online to, like, teenage Tony Stark, which I'm sure we're going to jump ahead. It's like, but babes, it's... we've already been there. We've already, again, stop rehashing. I want something original. Well, I think, you know, once the regular Ultimate Universe starts, we're going to jump ahead. So that's why they did Teenage Tony Stark in this one. So then he's, you know. And that's why he was teamed up with Asgardians, because they don't Yeah. Just a mess, though. But, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, it was a lot of characters that I really cared for in in that book. But I'm just like, okay, they said it's a foundational issue. I'll read it. It's fine. And that ultimate line, it looks, uh, it's like random. It's like, yeah, it's a Spider-Man. Of course you do a Spider-Man, but it's like, what is it? Like a Black Panther book's coming. Uh, what else was there? Uh, because it wasn't like the main, it wasn't like Spider-Man. Well, it's- Black Panther had been like, no, no Tino Shade. I thought that the last couple of books that they've done are written well, but I do feel like the direction is lost. Like they don't know what they want to actually do. Do they want to make him Batman? Do they just want to let him actually be T'Challa, ruler of Wakanda? Or do yeah. they want to take him out of Wakanda kind of thing? So I think that this is kind of like a reset to test the waters about what they actually want to do. Uh, and if people yeah. respond well, they'll, they'll do that in the main universe. Oh, uh, maybe, yeah. Oh no, we are. Oh yeah, then we are getting an Ultimate X Men book. But yeah, Black Panther. Always Spider Man X Men. You can count on it. Yeah. Is that the that the three? I thought there was one more, but right now, yeah, it looks like Spider Man X Men and Black Panther. So, so is that is so is the Ultimate Universe going to be like the testing ground here? Or like we're going to test stuff out if it does well? That's what it starts to feel like. Yeah. Because I like, think it's a little safe because you're making money while you're testing your theory. So. Because it's like Spider Man marriage. Yeah, like you said, with the Black Panther and even the X Men stuff, it's like the. Uh, uh, yes, we it. want classic X Men. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, I don't want plant people for my X people. I want classic. Yeah, exactly. I want up to no good Charles Xavier hitting on the female students. I want old classic X Men. And again, if you want different feels, you can have different teams. Like we, we've done this. We have a billion X teams, literally. And they don't have to all be centered in one spot. They can be. Headquartered all over the world, you got uh, you know you can have like two teams of X Men and X Factor and X Force, you know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the nineties did that. Yes, it got to a tipping point though. It was like a little bit one too many, so you are gonna have to learn how to balance that. But they were all successful for a very long time till a certain point. So oh yeah, again, Spider Man and X Men were keeping that company afloat in the nineties. Yeah. And the 2000s. Well, <laughs> shit. And then, womp womp. Womp womp. And that's how we got here. <laughs> Disney. True. The mouse has to be stopped. That's all. I, like, I, I'm still very upset about the Doctor Who thing. My, like, this this is my foot in the sand. This is my line in the sand with Doctor Who. I know it's only, like, international distribution or, like, North American or whatever. Womp. Rights. But... I don't know. This is for even even with all the money Disney's and they still have a lot of money and they could they could snatch it right away from the BBC if they wanted to. Hmm. So it's interesting. It's interesting what the mouse is up to these days. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Nope. All right, kids. All right, that's that's all your hobgobble gobble month. Like I said, you have two more episodes on Marvel Tales. Uh and let us know if you still want us to do another hobgobble gobble next year. Oh, you know, raise up for it. We're gonna we're gonna need at least four four answers of yes. Yeah, you know, Justin will be yes. Uh, <laughs> our... Gotta dig up two more, Phil. <laughs> we're gonna have to find a new tradition. <laughs> Russell loves hobgoblin. Uh... <laughs> 
All right, kids. But next week, yes, speaking of, Ray and Dave will be back to talk Minimum Carnage. (laughs) Bad Babysitter's Club in effect, guys. And then, yes, you're only going to get three episodes of Spider-Cast in December because the last week will be a holiday episode. Just a, uh, a generic holiday episode, so... Uh, but so just, just tell them it's a festivus episode. That's what, that's what we celebrate here on Capes and Luke's <laughs> oh, Network. Oh, we need to create our own holiday because I'm too commercial. Exactly. Even festivus is too commercial. All right. Uh, so Lilith and I, uh, two weeks in December, we're going to cover some Dazzler. Uh, the first one will be Amazing Spider Man 203. Uh, the second episode will be Marvel Team Up 108 and 109. Dazzling December. Get ready. Get ready. And then we'll bump up your Scarlet Spider episode the week three. So Scarlet Spider 12 and 12.1. Sounds like a plan, Jim. All right, kids. So, yes. So send us all your thoughts. Uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Is it remember- dark outside? Yeah, the, t- the clock's turned back. Oh, goodness. You can do that down there in Mexico. I was going to say daylight savings time uh, and uh, what began or end ended last night. Begins. So. Uh, technically, it ends in the spring, so it begins yeah. in the fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally forgot. I mean, thank God everything's automatic nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say yeah, ninety nine percent of the clocks turn to change themselves back. But yep, daylight savings. All right, kids. Uh, remember, you can find all things Capes of Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise, the Patreon. We can. Find crazy, sober, or drunken little hellfire. Uh, so find everything all in one place. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. All right, so little hellfire. Where can people find you? Uh, oh, if you if you want to spend time with your good old internet granny, you can find me on Facebook. Friend me there, of course, where all the old people hang out. Uh, you can also find me on Insta and Threads, where the young folks hang out at your fave internet granny. That's G R A N N I E. Your mother's a whore. Gobble gobble. Our whole family can suck it. <laughs> oh. uh, gobble gobble. A couple of bulls down the gob. Uh, what the f? Our <laughs> indeed. All right, kids. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again. Monthly Scarlet Spider episode next month with Minimum Carnage. And then back here in two weeks and three weeks for Spider-Man and Dazzler. And catch two episodes of Dazzler on Marvel Tales in December. But until then, swing on that. And don't forget to thwip it. And thwip it good. Thwip it on.